All right, y'all, I'm going to attempt to do two reviews at the same time in comparison to each other. And there's a, a reason, there's a method behind or to my madness. I'm thinking of Spike Lee's Black Klansman and Boots Riley's Sorry to Bother You. They came out around the same time, one in August and one in December of 2018, both made by black filmmakers. And both I find very interesting. I ended up liking both of them. And in different ways, Boots Riley, I remember, came out strongly against Black Klansmen, you know, for reasons of association with the police at the time. And I know the police are a big topic right now in, in 2020, whether to defund them, to abolish them, or to bolster them with funding. You know, people are having all these conversations. Kind of a big picture thing in comparison and contrast of the two films. Sorry to bother you. It seems like it could have benefited from a little bit more editing, like on a technical in a technical sense. I feel that we were looking at somewhat of a rough draft or a rough edit, like it could have been tightened up. It could have been shorter. There were maybe 20, 30, even up to 45 minutes that could have been cut and nothing functional would have changed from the movie. Whereas Black Klansman, you know, Spike Lee's got his craft for a while and maybe that's me being more biased to something that's more classically cut versus something more experimental. But certainly, sorry to bother you, is more experimental in terms of editing. And Black Klansman, more typical, more clean cut arc, beginning, middle, end. And Black Klansman and Sorry to Bother You share a focus on speech, particularly black people's ability to speak seemingly two different languages. They don't use these terms, but one of my favorite academics on this subject uses these terms. That's the black linguist or philologer, John McWhorter. He refers to standard English and black English. Sometimes people say academic English and African-American vernacular English. For several reasons, I, I don't care for either, although academic is a little less problematic than AAVE. So the main character, the protagonist of Sorry to Bother You and the protagonist of Black Klansmen are able to trick white people over the phone. Both of them involve the phone. Both of them involve using a quote unquote white voice, which is the standard English that anybody who's wanting to be in professional settings the way they are now, not as they're imagined or fantasized to be, has to learn, has to perfect if they want to move up the corporate ladder and even to some extent run their own business and on a small scale or a micro scale. So what's different is, sorry to bother you, enters into, spoiler alert, some horse human chimeras, some magic realism or surrealism that really is one of the first movies to remind me of like Salvador Dali, other Spanish realism. There's a great Ethiopian science fiction slash fantasy film called Crumbs that it reminds me of. It reminds me of A Scanner Darkly, the 2006 film with Keanu Reeves. It just gets really out there. It reminds me of times I've listened to Alex Jones on his own program and on the Joe Rogan experience. You know, it's it's different. It reminds you of Full Metal Alchemist, right, with the chimeras or the, the hybrids. It could remind you of South Park, if you remember the man bear pig. Is slightly different in this situation. Whereas Black Klansman is a more straight up fiction. There's nothing crazy that goes on. There's no science fiction. There's no crazy technology. There's no crazy fantasy that happens. Uh, I'll have to probably review the the Watchmen TV show pretty soon. And in, in that show, you, you get a little bit of that sci-fi fantasy blend. So Black Klansman you see really caricatures of the black power and white power movements, but in a hilarious way that I think is very intentional and pays homage to the black exploitation films and the exploitation films that have come before it. You see the radicals on both sides too, right? You see militant Klansmen versus peaceful Klansmen. You see uh, mili militant black folk or Black Panthers, or at least those who use militant rhetoric, and then those who are more just looking for change in general. And then you see the gradualists or the incrementalists of both sides. You see white police officers who want to have gradual change and are comfortable with 
sort of deep systemic issues, but also are willing to slowly root them out. But then you also have a black officer who sees some systemic issues and is trying to change them, but still is committed to this gradualism or incrementalism rather than the, the radicalness of the folks outside. So you get to see these ideas expressed a lot. You see the difference between the kind of uh, spook state uh, alphabetical soup boys or the alphabet boys, right? The FBI, the CIA, and their interaction with and backhanded assistance of and kind of following of local hate groups and local law enforcement as well. So all of these con contexts exist in both of them. And fundamentally, you know, this great thread that I said is this thread of, of black English versus standard English, how some people are able to switch back and forth through both, how some people are not able to switch back and forth. And in Sorry to Bother You, you're moving through a corporate world. And again, there are some caricatures there of the corporate world and of labor as a, as a resistance force against the corporate. And it focuses on one individual in Sorry to Bother You making himself improve and get better through time. Whereas Black Klansman focuses on one individual who's trying to help a community by rooting out uh, a certain hateful group, which is hilariously called by that group. You know, it's always funny how people self-identify differently, the invisible empire or the organization as opposed to the Ku Klux Klan. In any event, I recommend both of these films, but just, you know, take them each with a grain of salt and critically think about the ideas of radical change versus incremental change, individual change versus communal change. And I think that'll help you get a greater picture of the meta narratives behind these two films.